Welcome to the best review of the best gaming mouse and gaming mouse pad on the market in 2015. The Red 9 in combination with the Steel Series DAX. <clears throat> Anyways, hello. Uh, thanks in advance for watching this video. Uh, if you click this video, you're probably interested in a review on the Steel Series 9. I mean, god damn it, it always goes wrong. You know, when you start a video and anyways, um, the Red 9, <laughs> which is this thing, um, and the Steel Series DeX, which is this thing, a mouse pad. So uh, you're probably interested in that, or you're maybe interested in how to look for the best gaming mouse for you personally, or the best game pad or mouse pad for you personally. Uh, I also want to say that this is not like a technical review. Uh, there are a lot of reviews on the internet about the Red 9 that go over the technical specifications, how much DPI it has, uh, how it's able to customize every feature. For me, that's ob obviously also important, but not as important as how it feels like, how comfortable it is, how you play with it, how it glides and stuff like that. So I want to make a review really on the experience of using the product uh, rather than f focusing on the technical specifications, which in my opinion are less important. Uh, the same for the Steel Series DAX. I don't care about the grid pattern, I just care about how it feels. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's something uh, that I wanted to say. I also want to say that please watch this whole video, although it's probably a bit long at the end, uh, because I'm gonna say things that might be important for you. I'm gonna tell you a bit more about my personal preferences and stuff. And uh, if you recognize yourself in that, then maybe this is a good fit for you as well. Whereas if you don't recognize yourself at all in my story, maybe you should go for a different choice. I will also give you some alternatives uh, during this video that might be more suitable for you depending on what you want. So before I go into the review of this thing in the Steel Series decks, uh, I wanted to say something about myself uh, as well as my personal preferences or demands and that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm actually a product designer with a, an expertise on user experience design uh, and also user interaction design. Uh, so I have an eye for good products uh, and I can tell you this is a good product. It's really well built, well engineered, well designed, I really love the design. Uh, but having that said, a gaming mouse is really, really subjective to taste as well as to personal preferences or demands. So my opinion is in no way better than your opinion or anyone's opinion for that matter, uh, because it all depends on what you want from it. There are a lot of gaming mouses and also game pads, by the way, that are really good. So this is not your only option. This is just one of the options that we're gonna discuss today. Um, so yeah, and I will come back to my profession later because well, anyways, it has something to do with my demands. Um, so about my personal demands and um, yeah, my wishes, I guess. First of all, uh, on number one uh, is the look and feel of the design, um, which obviously is important because you're never gonna buy a mouse, probably never gonna buy a mouse that you think looks ugly. So if you think this thing looks ugly, you probably shouldn't buy it. Uh, but having that said again, um, I think the looks and feels of a design, although really, really important, I think are less important than how it feels like. So you might want to give it a go even if you think it's an ugly mouse. Uh, but since you clicked on this video, you probably like the mouse already. Um, yeah, uh, second thing, technical specifications. Now, I'm not gonna explain anything about this because simply put, everything above 80 euro or even above 60 euro or 70 dollars, whatever, is probably a good mouse. So um, the technical specifications are quite the same for all the mice out there. And uh, I mean, it's just bullshit. You know, it, it, they're just good mouses. Razer has so many good mouses that are 60 euro. Um, uh, Steel Series has the Sensei, which is really good. Um, so yeah, I, I don't go into spe technical specifications. Uh, three, and now we come to the stuff that really matters in my opinion, is... Um, ergonomics uh, is, is it comfortable and about ergonomics by the way a lot of people think this mouse for example is ergonomic because it has a really organic shape and it supposedly fits your hand better um, actually although this doesn't look 
ergonomic at all. What ergonomic means for me is that it's comfortable for your hand or posture for a very long time um, of use of the product. So although this doesn't look ergonomic, it actually feels really comfortable for even a long duration of time and it fits my hand perfectly. Um, so I, I really love it. Um, the 4.4 is actually a little bit in the extension of 0.3 is the shape of your hands. Not has actually has nothing to do with the mouse directly, but indirectly. Yes, I have very fat, small hands, like really, really fat, as you can probably see. It's ridiculous. I mean, look at it. These hands are really small, really fat. They're freaking ugly, but they're my hands, so I love them anyways, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, you have to pick a mouse based on the shape of your hand, obviously. I have really small hands, so it, this actually, f this mouse, the Razer 9, or the Red 9, sorry, uh, fits my small hand quite good. Um, quite perfectly, actually. And I can imagine if you have very big hands or long fingers, maybe this isn't the right pick for you. Although it's fully customizable, of course, you can make it fit for longer, taller hands as well, bigger hands. However, uh, it might be less comfortable. I can't give you a review on that because I only have my hands to test with. But for a small hand to medium sized hand, I think it's really comfortable. And it feels like you're really in control. It feels like I can grip it and I'm totally in control of it. And I really love the feel of it. Um, so yeah, that's I guess 0.5 already. So does the shape of the mouse fit your hand nicely? Do you feel in control? And does it feel like you can, I don't know, do everything you want? Uh, point six is what sensitivity do you play at? Um, because this also defines, I guess, uh, point seven. Um, I play at a medium on the low side uh, sensitivity. My sensitivity in Counter-Strike, for example, is quite low. It's like 1.3. Uh, DPI is about 800. Maybe that specifies as a low sensitivity actually um but i don't know I, my play style is like i have a medium size sensitivity like i don't have to do like this you know like all the time and now we come back to my profession i guess uh, because when i design products i also have to sketch a lot and before i did uh, industrial design i actually did a lot of drawing classes so my uh, small motoric skills are really well developed i would say so doing this with my mouse and controlling the mouse with my fingers um, is actually really nice. Like I can control my mouse with my wrist and my fingers really well. And I'm not so good with uh, big motoric skills. So sliding it across the table. So the motorics with my arm. Um, so uh, having that said again, um, yeah, playing at a, I guess a medium sensitivity, I guess more or less. Uh, or not having to do like this all the time. That's my playstyle because my fine motoric skills are quite good, I guess. Um, but why I wanted to say this is because of the weight of the mouse. I don't know. I might be unique and strange in this regard. Um, but I like a really heavy mouse. And this mouse is probably the most heavy mou mouse you can buy. It's insane. I actually removed two weights of it uh, because it was incredibly heavy and even now with two weights less in this thing there's still five weights in this thing and a battery and it's aluminum the base is aluminum so it's incredibly heavy um but i really like it because it feels it gives me the feeling that i'm in control also when i do the small uh, movements instead of the big movements i guess if you do the big movements if you play at a really low sensitivity you want it to be lighter because you have to be able to move it across the whole mouse pad really fast and then this thing is too heavy for it um also if you are the guy that lifts up the mouse a lot like this you know then maybe this is also a bit too heavy although i do that actually with this mouse even though it's heavy but i don't do it often because my play style i normally never have to turn around uh they usually, I usually aim where there are people probably, so I never have to do weird movements and a lot. I kind of anticipate where the enemy is and I listen very, very well, of course. So, um, yeah. So if you play at a very low sensitivity, 
I would recommend the Razer Death Adder, which is a really good mouse, or the SteelSeries Sensei, which I think is uh, also a really, really good mouse. Sorry, I have to drink because my throat gets sore, uh, you know, because of talking to you. So, um, point eight is I want zero friction, and that's, you know, talking about the mouse pad and the mouse together, I guess. The way why, I, or the reason why I want as minimal friction as possible is because when I do these small movements with my hand, um, I want it to feel like it glides superbly, that it glides really nicely. And if I feel friction, it feels annoying. I don't know why, but it like, that's why I have a heavy mouse, that's why I want um, low friction, because if, if you have a heavy mouse together with a lot of friction, it's not gonna move, uh, <laughs> it's like st stuck to one position. Uh, if you have a very light mouse and a cloth mouse pad with a little bit more friction, that's fine, I guess. And then you can stop quite easily as well. But I don't need to stop quite fast because my movements are small anyways, usually. So there's not much momentum uh, in the movement. So it's easier to stop. That's why I want a heavy mouse with low friction. So those smaller movements feel really good. That's, I guess, yeah, what I uh, have to say. So those are my eight points. If you recognize yourself in these eight points, and this might be a big, uh, you know, a good pick for you. Um, I do want to show something else as well. And that's my other things that I use. So I use this mouse, which is the Razer Naga. Uh, I really like this mouse, but it's really for MMO gaming, as you can see on all, you know, on all the buttons. Um, actually, before that, I had the Red 7, as you can see here, with the wire. Uh, but it broke down. As you can see, I tried to solder it. That actually worked, but then it broke again. Here on a place I really can't fix it. So that's why I wanted to buy the Red 9 because I really like this mouse and I've used this mouse a lot. Before this mouse, I used Logitech G5, I think. That was in the time when I played Counter-Strike 1.6. I really like this mouse as well. Uh, and now for MMO gaming, although I don't really do that anymore, I have this mouse, which is the Razer Naga 2014 edition with mechanical buttons on the side, as you can hear maybe which sounds wonderful. Uh, also, look at, I don't know if you can hear this sound. Sounds quite well, but this sound, probably for you it's the same. <laughs> I don't know. But for me, it, it clicks really nicely, this Red 9. Uh, that's just a small thing, I guess. Uh, I also used a lot of freaking mouse pads. This is the first mouse pad that I had. It's a Razer mouse pad. Uh, it has two sides, smooth and a little bit of texture. It's a hard, you know, hard mouse pad. Uh, and that was my first contact with hard mouse pads. Then I had this thing, which fills the entire screen, uh, which was a quite decent cloth mouse pad, but nothing special. Um, and then I came to the maybe more serious picks. Uh, this one is the Razer Destructor. Uh, but I want you to hear something, and I hope you can actually hear it. Uh, let's pick this mouse, for example, my Razer Naga 2014. Uh, let's see if you can hear the sound. I don't know if you can hear the sound, I really don't know. But that's what it sounds like when put on this surface, which I really didn't like. Then I actually bought this thing, which is the Razer, I don't know, Iron Pad or uh, Razer Destructor 2.0. I don't know what which it is, but it has a smooth surface. Razer Destructor has a bubbly surface. Surface, this one is completely smooth and made of metal instead of hard plastic. Uh, but listen to this, okay? Now, I hope you could hear that. It makes a lot of sound. Both these pads make a lot of sound. And that's what I hate it, because what you hear, you can also feel. It just feels like there's a lot of friction. Not really friction, though, because actually this, this metal pad, actually has the maybe the lowest friction of all. But um, because it scratches, it just scratches. My mouse feed got damaged really fast, because one breadcrumb on this thing ruins the whole experience. 
and uh, I don't know it attracts it's like it attracts dust for some reason so that's why I didn't like it it felt horrible actually um, for me you know personally so I went back to cloth after that one and I bought this small thing which is the steel series quick uh, it's a small one because I can take it with me to school or to work or whatever um, and I want you to hear this one as well As you can hear probably there is almost no sound and it also feels like there is no sound it feels really frictionless like there's no friction at all it feels wonderful so the steel series quick is probably a really really good alternative to pick if you don't want to spend 40 euros on a mouse pad now over to the sound of the steel series quick again with this mouse the 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 Razer Naga Now, I hope you could hear that. It also has almost no sound. Maybe a bit more than the Steel Series Quick, but it has it almost has no sound. Um, and you also feel that again. It's like really smooth. It has so little friction, almost no friction. Now with the Razer, uh, or the Razer, I keep saying Razer, uh, the Red 9, let's listen to the sound. Hopefully it gives you an impression of how it glides. So, um, I'm also going to show you the glide, by the way. Um, but it also, there's not much sound. It feels really smooth. It feels really good. So, after having tried cloth mouse pads and hard mouse pads, a lot of them, which I spend way too much money on, I came back to this option, which is a hybrid between having a soft mouse pad, a cloth mouse pad, or a hard mouse pad. It's really a hybrid in between those things. And for me, that's the best of two worlds. You really couldn't want more because it's portable, it's flexible, it's perfect. Um, it doesn't scratch your mouse. It doesn't make annoying sounds. And it feels like a cloth mouse pad, but also like a hard mouse pad when it comes to the low friction because cloth mouse pad usually have a bit more friction but this doesn't have friction, it feels amazing. Um, so when it comes to the mouse pad, this is really, I think the best mouse pad I've ever had. It feels amazing. Um, let, let me just take another sip. Ah, so, um, I guess maybe I can say a few things on the mouse again. Uh, the clicks are really good. It really feels comfortable. Um, it's it's super smooth um, it fits my hand perfectly uh, and also one thing about the technical specifications I like to mention is that it's wireless as you can see right here this is the receiver and it has two batteries you can charge them uh, independently uh, or I mean just one at a time but like you have one in your mouse and one in the charger which m means you can use the mouse all the time basically um, and a lot of people say wireless sucks for gaming and I have to agree with that but with this mouse I don't notice any delay and I'm not a global elite I'm actually Master Guardian 2 so that's not all too high in Counter-Strike but it's a decent uh, rank and I'm probably soon gonna be higher because I actually haven't played that much um, but yeah uh, I'm not the highest rank but I'm still decent and I don't notice any lag with this mouse. It also has like 4. Point, I mean 2.4 gigahertz wireless technology or whatever. So that probably means it has no delay. <laughs> but uh, I really don't notice any delay and that's I guess the most important part. So if you're a global elite, elite player, you know, then maybe you notice it, but I definitely don't notice it. So for most of you people there uh, on the other end of the of your screen, I guess, uh, not that I'm at the back side of your screen, I'm just a video, or I'm a person recording a video and you're watching it. <laughs> what am I talking about? Uh, it's so random, this. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is probably a good pick for you. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm really happy with this mouse, and I'm really happy with this mouse pad. It feels amazing uh, and comfortable, and I think 
together with all the technical specifications and the ability to m customize this, this thing completely because you can remove all parts and stuff um, I think this is a really really good mouse uh, if not the best mouse I don't know I think it definitely out of 10 I think it should get a 9.8 or something there are a few different things the only thing is that if you like light weight mouses or mi mice then this is not for you the, even without any weights this is still way more heavy than for example my Razer Naga uh, because, but this on the other hand feels quite plasticky and this feels like a quality product it doesn't mean it is more of quality than the other one it just feels really good um, so yeah when playing counter-strike at 1.3 sensitivity and 800 dpi which is also quite low dpi i guess um, it feels amazing i can do flick shots meaning like and stop and then shoot i can do that without any problems um, I can aim real carefully. There is also a preci precision aim button on the side, which lowers your DPI. For me, I set it to 75%, so I go from 800 to uh, 200 all of a sudden, uh, which makes you aim maybe a bit better. I actually never use it because I think it's bullshit. Just practice with your normal DPI and you're fine, so you don't need it. But maybe in some single player games, it's nice to be able to aim a bit better with lower sensitivity all of a sudden. Um, I don't think it's very well suitable for MMO gaming by the way because it has two buttons on the side and um, I think for MMO gaming you really need a Razer Naga or something similar because when I played World of Warcraft I really needed this thing I, I used all of these bottom row bottoms and some of the upper row uh, buttons buttons yeah um, so I really think you need more buttons and although this has quite some buttons and a scroll wheel on the side and stuff I think it's not enough for MMO gaming but Red actually or Cyborg, uh, Cytec actually has an MMO version of this uh, which might be more suited for that um, I guess I'm gonna round it up because it's already 22 minutes about a freaking mouse and a mouse pad and verdict it's incredibly good the mouse pad amazing it's the best of two worlds it's exactly what I wanted uh, and I've had just to show it again I've had a lot of experiences with other mouse pads and out of all these freaking mouse pads this really is the best one for me personally I've also had three mouses here plus more mouses that I had in the past that I already thrown away so if I, I've had like five six different mouse mouses and out of all of these mouse mouses mice mouses mice i don't know uh this one is also the best for me personally again now i hope this video helps you i have no idea if it does um and if it did help you then please like it and subscribe to my channel although i'm never gonna review anything again so probably don't subscribe <laughs> but, but it looks nice on my subscription count <laughs> anyways cheers and see you guys maybe next time or never again. And in that ca case, goodbye forever. <laughs> Yo, see ya.